Kinetics is the study of how fast reactions go. Reactions can be slow, like the conversion of concrete into limestone can take centuries. The rusting of steel structures can take decades. Combustion uh, could be a fraction of a second or seconds. Um, explosions, definitely a fraction of a second. So we can have a wide range of how fast reactions go. We measure our reactions by change of concentration over time. Generally, we like to use molarity. So change of molarity over time for our rate. And we'll play with this a little bit between the different reactants and different um, products and reaction using the stoichiometric ratio. But um, to get a single rate, for all the reactions, reactants and products in a single reaction, what we do is for reactant, we do the negative of the change over time, over the change of time, divided by the coefficient of that reactant. So delta change of reaction would be negative. So this negative is making it positive. We always like our rates as being positive. For products where change of concentration is positive, we do a change of concentration over change of time divided by this coefficient. So it's dividing by the coefficient that is making all the different reactants and products being the same. We're doing negative the change of reactants, so we end up with a positive rate and positive change of reactants for products. Um, so what affects the rate? How do we affect it? Uh, uh, one of the obvious things is we've got concentration. So concentration affects uh, the rate. And we'll see that um, uh, in the types of rate laws that we're expecting. Temperature affects rate. Um, so the oxidation of iron is generally a slow process, but if we uh, give the iron a lot of surface here, we make it into a powder, disperse in air so it's well mixed with a lot of oxygen. So we throw a handful of iron filings above a campfire, and when it hits the flame of the campfire, the iron burns real fast. Um, so, but is that flame raising the temperature high enough that gets that fire to go? So it's throwing the iron into the air, won't start a fire, but we raise the temperature up, and then we can burn that iron. Catalysts are very, very important. We use them uh, in all types of uh, chemical synthesis industries. And um, our environmental um, processes, like uh, our car, we have catalytic converters to clean up the combustion process, uh, make the combustion more complete so we're getting carbon dioxide and water out of it instead of carbon monoxide and polyaromatic hydrocarbons or products of incomplete combustion. So catalysts speed up reaction, but they don't get consumed. They're not a reactant but their presence helps speed up the reaction, usually by making up, providing another alternative reaction pathway. A compound that would slow reaction down is called an inhibitor. And um, we look for inhibitors as some type, as medicines for uh, treating some type of uh, illnesses in our body, trying to slow down certain reactions so we have a, um, better health from it. So um, for a generic reaction, um, A plus B gives us C plus D with coefficients of A, lowercase a for A, lowercase b for B, lowercase c for C, lowercase d for D. We expect our rate law to be written on the reactants. We generally do not expect to see any products or other things in there. We do. A uh, catalyst will show up as a, a you know, the term, even though it's not a reactant. Uh, so we expect a rate law to be rate equals a constant, the rate constant, times the first um, uh, reactant to an exponent, times the second reactant to an exponent, and we'll continue, third reactant to an exponent, 
the exponents we cannot predict. They are not the coefficients from the balance equation. Um, and we cannot predict them based on the balance equation at all. So the only way that we could predict this, if we knew all the elementary steps of the reaction, then we could derive a rate law. But generally, the overall reaction could have multiple steps um, within it. So our rate laws, um, rate equals constant times um, each reactant to an exponent. The rate constant is temperature dependent, so we don't see temperature in the equation, but uh, we're going to have another equation to uh, derive K and show its temperature dependence. The, um, if we're just looking at uh, A, so uh, what's the order of, re of reaction with respect to A? Order is the exponent. So if the exponent is zero, it's zero order. If it's one, it's first order. If it's two, it's second order. We could have fractional orders. Uh, we're not going to be focusing on those. And um, the overall order of the reaction is the sum of all the exponents in the rate law. Um, so if we had a um, x was one, y was two, then we have one plus two, the overall order is three, or a third order reaction. So this is a, a intro uh, to it. We'll next play with a stoichiometry between the various reactants and various products, and then go into the rate laws better uh, using a integrated rate laws that allow us to do better processes. So let me uh, actually break down the rate laws. So this zero order, if um, I'm just going to do a, the A only, so rate equals, if it's A to a zero, that disappears. So rate equals K, a constant. So for a zero order reaction, the rate is constant throughout. For a first order reaction, rate is directly proportional to the concentration. So if we double the concentration, we double the rate. For a second order reaction, now the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration. So if we double the concentration, two squared, we're going to quadruple the rate. So the rate increases way faster for second order reaction as we increase the concentration. So this is a little intro. Uh, again, uh, we'll go into these by doing an integrated rate law, which allows us to uh, take data and figure out the order of the reaction better. So we're going to have two methods of figuring out uh, the order of reaction. Uh, one is by using integrated rate laws and plotting graphs and the second one is using method of initial concentration, where when we double a concentration, what's happened? We double a concentration here, but we know change in rate. Double a concentration here, we're doubling the rate. Double a concentration here, we're quadrupling the rate. So that would be method of initial rates to figure out the rate law on that one. 